So, <clears throat> I don't know, I just wanted to change everything. I didn't want to tour anymore and I wanted to live a still kind of ritualistic existence where I just did certain things at each time of the day and I was home with the dogs and it was like, this is what I needed to stay sober and just be a healthy person. bonus mother really I do take that role very seriously yeah she um, is the best person in my life she really is um, she's I think my godmom now is that right yeah I think so like officially or just yeah yeah yeah, yeah so if anything were to happen she would take me which is really cool and we just the day we met we clicked and we knew that it was a special connection and she's so great she's the greatest person the first change happened with my you know subconscious adopting of her I realized my heart could never love anyone more. Even when we have loads of security around, I'm like around hypervigilant around her and very protective. Um, and I think that she was the beginning of my realization that I had a lot of love to still give. And then I think I realized through a lot of my um, therapy and, and work that I was the baby that I'd been wanting to look after. And once I started that work of looking after my own traumas and inner child, I realized that I have enough love and I have enough resources to actually be of assistance to the less likely to be adopted and that's why I decided to take my boys. I was watching Dance Moms and I saw Maddie and I thought she was incredible. I cried when I watched something that she did and I thought if I can cry watching a kid do that kind of choreography that's highly commercial then she must have something special. I have to talk about Sia, like when she connected with you, like how did the whole thing happen? Like, so she was a fan of Dance Moms and she saw my solos on there and like watched me as a dancer on that show. And then she just contacted me on Twitter and was like, I just want you to be in my music video. So like random just like that. And I didn't even really think it was real because I was like, that's like, like why me? Like what the heck? So then two weeks later, we flew to LA and the second we met, like we just gave each other a huge hug and now we're like best friends. Just wanting to wish you a very happy book release day. Congratulations. You're my very special friend. I love you so much. Oh, I just adore you. I've had so many opportunities from it, and I've got to perform with Sia, and Sia is a great role model to people. She's like the most beautiful person, and I love her so much. Tell us about that relationship. The first time I showed her chandelier, like the dance, she cried, and Ever since then, we were just like best friends. So it's weird to think because we have such a big age gap, but people right, are like 14 and she's okay. in her 40s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people are like, how does that work? But it's, we're best friends. We are similar, but she is much, much stronger psychologically <laughs> than I am. And so I always say, if you want it to stop, it stops. Like, we can, let's, you can, I'll take you to art class or cooking classes. She gives me a lot of great lessons in life to make sure that I'm not overworking or just making sure that I'm having fun with everything that I'm doing, which I really appreciate. And she's just nice to everyone and so she's talented. taught me, she's it, taught me everything. I like so many life lessons and I'll never forget that. So uh, she can be. I, I, I remember even the first time meeting her because she has so much mystique around her. Mm -hmm. And just meeting her, wow, she's actually as cool as you think she is. She's literally, if you didn't know she was a pop star, you would never think she's the most down to earth. Yeah. There is a relationship between the two of you that is so, it is kind of like beautiful and masterful and artistic and it extends into her sister. Did you ever think you would bond this heavily with two like teenage sisters? Well, I mean, as soon as I met Maddie, I felt this extreme desire to protect her. And I think that it was part of my own healing. 
And yet, you know, the irony is that I didn't want to be famous and I threw this child into the spotlight. And she would say to me, don't be silly, I was already famous and I wanted to be famous. And I say, and you know it can stop at any time, right? Like, if you want it to stop, I can make it stop. But she said, no, I just love it. I love performing, I love dancing, and I love acting so much. And how's a good way I can keep her safe is just keep making projects for her. Therefore, most of the time we're working together. It feels amazing to be part of this whole project because I never thought that this would be so big because the main star isn't even in the video. So I think it's amazing and I'm so proud that I'm able to be a part of it. And, um, you know, and I kept her off a plane that Harvey Weinstein tried to get her on. My insight has really made a difference, has kept her safe. Um, yeah, that was really disgusting. Would you describe your relationship as a mother or as a sister? Yeah, mother. Mother and friend. But I mean, only because Melissa lets me. That's her real mother. Only because I would never like be so presumptuous to say I feel like I'm her mother because I did not do all the hard work that Melissa did for the first 11 years. I just love her as a mother. I would take a bullet for her. I, I guess all the things that parents would say they'd do to their children. And also I get extremely, like, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm like a bodyguard when she's around. Like my bodyguard jokes that if I ever stop doing my singing thing, I should be a bodyguard because I'm so hypervigilant around Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> So as a mom, when she brings you a situation where she could be on a plane with Harvey Weinstein, I mean, obviously your guard goes up, but like, how do you oh, handle yeah. that? Like, so he, when he invited her, I, I, that's when I called, I just called, I told, I told Melissa, I had to, I just said, please don't, do not do that, do not do that, do not do that. Like I, and then I, you know, even recently there was, she was offered a part in a film and I, I felt that the, the film wasn't good enough for her. And so I called Melissa and I was just, please don't do this. Like, this isn't good for her career. It's not good for her long-term credibility. This is not a good, like, co-star to be in a movie with. Like, so I just try and help guide. And I can be a pain in the butt. I think her manager thinks I'm a real pain in the butt, I'm sure. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you're the needed pain in the butt. There's no financial gain here. There's nothing but love. Exactly. There's no agenda except for keep her safe psychologically and physically, but more primarily psychologically, because this business is very, very damaging. Is it a big decision for you? Because it is damaging on so many different levels, and a part of you not wanting to be famous is obviously you... And then throwing her in the spot. I mean, I feel a terrible shame. I wasn't conscious at the time. I had no idea Chandelier was going to be so massive. Then she would blow up and be this famous little teenager and... But I've taken responsibility for it in as much as that I provide her security and that I'm always here for her if she wants to cry, has a bad day or has questions about life. That's what I'm here for. I just got goosebumps. By the way, both Maddie and Kenzie at this point, you provide a sense of family and friendship. That's rare. That's one in a trillion. One in a trillion. <laughs> wish that you still haven't fulfilled that you still want to fulfill no now my compulsion is to ask maddie what do you want to do next and then create a vehicle for her to do that just give my friends opportunities that they may not have been able to have even now i'm like wow i at 11 years old i had like over a million views on a video a billion this is her bridal dress like her bridal shower dress and oh yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, but how did you end up? I don't know. Okay, she, I'm basically like her daughter, and yeah. so she's always wanted to like dress up her daughter and just like put her in different like cool clothes, and this fit like a glove. And she's like, this is epic. And she literally, I've never seen her turn into a stage mom like that before. She literally was on her. She was like this. She was like, okay, from the side to the back. Like she was like taking photos. I was like, <laughs> she was like sliding on her knees, and I was like, what's going on? What's been like the best advice that she's given you? I remember when we were filming Elastic Heart, she was saying like, if it, enough is enough, then just make sure you tell someone and not keep overworking if you're not happy with it. Right. But I really like to work. Like, it's weird, because she was saying also, most she's kids had a really good work ethic. Yeah, like it's really random. When I'm home, I'm like, I just need to work because I'm bored and I just want to keep moving, moving. I hope to be doing 
the same thing, probably just on a more like elevated level. I just want to continue to, of course, dance and work with Sia. Well, with Sia, definitely. That's she's been amazing throughout this whole journey. And what has been a highlight um, of all the work that you've done so far? And Sia texted me today and said oh. that you are, she's so excited that you're going to be on the show and that I'm you're so happy, one yeah. of her favorite people and she just adores you.